Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss something that happened about a week ago to our very own Praveer Purkayastha on a flight from Delhi to New York when the aircraft had a very unexpected and in retrospect hair raising experience. Praveer, so you came, you had a near death experience on your flight to New York? Not that we felt that. Yes. Okay, because the captain did announce that there were some there were some instrument failures on the craft. And I don't think most people realized what that means when you're still flying. I did th think that, you know, what does this instrument failure really mean? But the extent of the failure was only known later. And it does seem that, yes, when you talk about the possibility of an accident, it does seem that the number of systems that had failed were large enough to have at least for the 370 passengers in the flight and the crew to have been considered a very, shall we say, near uh, hair-raising ex ex experience. For the sake of our viewers, to recap quickly, this was a Boeing 777 aircraft which is about to land at uh, JFK Airport in New York and suddenly experienced a loss of all major instrument landing and related instruments due to which it couldn't land at JFK, was running low on fuel and had to divert to Newark airport where it made what's called a non-precision uh, landing which is essentially uh, landing with the aid of very few instruments. Uh, conspiracy theorists of course would love the fact that this happened to you on 9-11 and the <laughs> fact that the aircraft actually landed safely would by itself have made news. In fact, a lot of people told me that in New York that day, the, any, any incident that happens on 9-11 is considered something which is, uh, you know, oh my God kind of incident. That's right. And anything so, to do with aircraft. <laughs> the people, people really freak out. Yes. So yes, I think uh, the fact that it was an aircraft related issue and uh, that they they were forced to avoid JFK with so many passengers on board, and that this was a freak accident because if was you talked about the instrument failures, if you look list at look at the list of instruments uh, failed, which of course is pretty large. All the three instrumentation landing systems failed, uh, altimeters failed. So there was a whole range of instrument failures, but they also seemed to have lost power at least on some of their engines because. Yeah. The, air, uh, the captain did announce that only one engine would be running to keep the power on. Yeah. The auxiliary power unit seems to have also conked. And we were told to the gate that it, all these were raising question marks to me that what was the extent of the failure and even opening the gate was a hell of a problem. So all of this did seem to yeah. show that there were multiple failures. Yes. And it is uh, lucky for the crew that the passengers did not realize it because after two and a half hours in the aircraft, we were not being let out, we were being towed, all this created the scenario where at the end of it, people were start starting to get very antsy. Right. But if they realized what they were really going through, I think there would be far bigger panic in panic, the aircraft. Yeah. Uh, of course, we will have to await uh, the report of the inquiry, which is bound to be now uh, uh, conducted by Boeing uh, on the one hand and perhaps by DGCA uh, as well because after all the aircraft left Indian uh, shores after an inspection. Uh, some introspection and back check of the condition of the aircraft, the kinds of inspections that were done also would require to be made. But from what one has seen from the different reports of the failures, etc., it appears to be a central electrical systems failure or a failure in what's called the aircraft information management system, Signaling the system. AIMS, which is the brains of the 777 uh, aircraft. Because otherwise, it's very difficult to explain multiple failures of the kind that's that's a uh, question that you yeah. really would be able yes. to address much better for our audience that for our viewers that you know if when you look at the systems they 
number of redundancies yes. in the system. It has three instrumentation landing systems. Yep. Each of them are supposed to be redundant. Yep. It has multiple altimeters. Except one altimeter, all of them had failed. Yep. On both sides, their altimeters both had failed. Correct. So if you look at all of this, this is very difficult to explain with so many redundancies yep. in the system. Uh, why should a, this array, this scale of yeah. malfunctions have occurred? The, this is pure hypothesis, of course, but it is likely that something gave in the AIMS, uh, the aircraft uh, information, uh, information management system, which is a centralized system, but which links all the other systems together, uh, together that go with it. And apparently, I have read comment by at least one pilot uh, who has said that a multiple failure like this is not unknown in the Boeing 777 because when you are on an instrument landing approach, uh, the signal switches from one bus to another and in that process can trip uh, the system completely sometimes. And if that happens and if you are aware of it and if you have been trained to anticipate this, then you do what is essentially a reboot of uh, the system. You switch off the systems and re-switch on the ILS and the auto landing system. Nobody seems to have advised the pilot. The ATC didn't. Uh, the pilot used his instincts and basic flying skills to land the aircraft virtually manually to do this. But this is something that I think Boeing would have to Explain. investigate. Because if this is known uh, to the aircraft manufacturer, then something should be done to prevent the recurrence uh, of such a uh, tripping, uh, which then trips multiple systems, systems despite the redundancies. So the redundancies have a common bit failure in the information that's management right, system. That's right, because that what pulls calling, everything together. Yeah, what you're saying is is a common bus that's right. which can cause the trip. That's right. So that's the common board failure possibilities that's right. in the system. That's right. And that's a very interesting issue because if this this the triple triple seven that we talked about is nine years old. Yep. So if this has gone on for such a long time yep. that the system this particular mode of failure is not unknown. Yes. Then why something was not done? A, that's right. B. Why is there no guidance under such conditions? What exactly. To do? And exactly. And C. Why then landing without the system? that there is no guidance on that as well. Because what exactly. I understand is that this landing, which the pilots did. Yeah, they're not trained for it. This is not trained and neither is the Boeing uh, manual. It's not in the Boeing manual either. So this is these are the two aspects which I think need to be looked at. Whether pilot training needs to account for such a failure. multiple failure and how to train a pilot to handle uh, this and maybe have some good uh, feedback coming in from ground systems, either from ATC or from somebody else. The ACARS system, for example, which links multiple information sources on the ground, should have been able to give some more guidance to the pilot. Uh, which it seems it did in some sense because the pilot was coming in a little low. Uh, that that is just uh, normal uh, ATC uh, guidance saying, it looks like you're too low pilot would have made some correction and then uh, landed. So pilot training is one part, whether the guidance could be stepped up for such an eventuality. But certainly, I think Boeing needs to look at the uh, information management system on the aircraft to try and see that this is prevented. The other question I wanted to ask you is that it's easy to blame Air India in oh, this sure. particular case because Air India has been sick, so there is a loss, shall we say, of alarm in the aircraft, Quite. loss of confidence maybe of the passengers in the airlines itself. But the safety rankings are not bad. No. All the latest rankings that we see, yeah. Air India ranks along with Air France and yes. a whole lot of other yeah. ones. Yeah. And uh, they're among the top 60 airlines, they're around 40, yeah. which actually makes them above Air France, for example. Yeah. 
So it's not a bad record. No, though it's not the best record. Yeah. No question. But it's neither a bad record. Yeah. In the other air rating systems, it has six stars, and the maximum is seven. So again, it doesn't make it very poor. Quite. So this was not a kind of maintenance failure, because I could understand maintenance failure means one instrument failure. Yeah. But multiple instruments failing yeah. systems. Failing I would. Not I would, however, failure. look at two aspects uh, in this. One is uh, there was a report a uh, few months ago uh, about some triple seven aircraft, I'm not sure whether it included this one or not, which were grounded for some time because of a lack of spares. And it will be interesting to know whether it was this aircraft or uh, some other. The other is something which I have at least felt for a long time. India needs to have uh, a separation between its uh, airworthiness approval agency, which is the DGCA, and its accident inquiry agency, which unfortunately is again the DGCA. And this is not a correct situation at all. There should be complete separation between investigation and airworthiness clearance. You can't have it all rolled up into one agency because if DGCA has cleared the aircraft, you can't expect DGCA to find fault with itself. Uh, so I think that's so something that needs a problem that initially regulatory agencies had. That's right. They were rolled into the operating agency that's as well. That's right. Which because needs we, to be. We did not have the kind of skill set at the time. At that time. Agencies. But, now but now we now should. Has, yeah. time has come for this. The last question. The pilots are really to be congratulated on Absolutely. keeping a cool head. Absolutely. Because landing on one altimeter. Absolutely. No instrumentation landing systems available with fuel running low and not a very good uh, condition either because the atmosphere terrible weather conditions bad weather conditions and i must say i've listened to the atc uh, conversations between the pilot and the atc uh, the transcripts have come in most of the uh, papers but i've heard the atc uh, uh, recordings extremely cool the pilots really need to be commended for maintaining their cool taking a decision smoothly, and then being able to land the aircraft virtually manually without specific guidance in that direction. I think it was a fantastic effort. And I must confess that the landing was fairly smooth. Yeah. It wasn't any different from no. any other landing I have uh, had. And sometimes other landings with full instruments have been much bumpier. Sure. So I would say that we need to give really... Absolutely. Uh, I think it was a fantastic job for that. Whatever the final report says, whether it's from Boeing or DGCA, I hope the final re report also records because. the fantastic job done by the pilots. Yeah. So thank you uh, again, Praveer, and welcome back to this country safe and sound. <laughs>